Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to FFW Genesis. I am your host, Christopher Billings. And ladies and gentlemen, we, we came back last week, and you guys saw everything that happened, all those title matches that happened. But tonight, it marks a whole new, a whole new era in FFW, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, if you missed the, the tweets on Twitter, Guy Hard was removed from being the acting general manager of Genesis and replaced with former general manager uh, from a few years ago, Steve Baker. And uh, right now, Jerry Graham, our current FFW champion, is making his way to the ring. And you got to believe that Jerry Graham is looking to enjoy this moment where Die Hard has been ousted out of power. Uh, you know, the board of directors felt that Die Hard would possibly make biased decisions due to his son being a champion. And so it was a unanimous vote to remove him as the acting general manager. So I'm interested to see what Jerry Graham's got to say. He had a spectacular title defense against Adam B. Whitmore. So I'm ready to get this thing under. I'm ready to get tonight on the way. I hope you guys are ready. Because uh, we got a lot to get to. And uh, as you see Jerry Graham holding the FFW Championship high, getting a much better reaction tonight than what he got when he defended his championship the last time. It uh, looks like uh, Jerry Graham might be asking for a microphone, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and be quiet here and let him talk to the FFW universe. Now I know that I did not have a great performance last week against Adam D. Whitmore, and you, the fans, you let me know that. You booed me, and I haven't been booed in over two years. And I want to apologize for giving you such a lackluster performance. And I want to tell you that it'll never happen again. As long as I'm the FFW champion, I will give you the absolute best that I can possibly give you in the ring. From this day forward, when I come to this ring, you will cheer for me because I will give you every ounce of blood, sweat, tears, everything that I have to be the best possible FFW champion for the FFW universe, which is the best ever, undoubtedly the best. And, uh, well, strong words from Jerry Graham, and this is the, uh, the Genesis theme song, which uh, is kind of strange that Jerry Graham's being interrupted by the Genesis theme song. But, uh, okay, that's Steve Baker, the, the current acting general manager of Genesis. And it uh, looks like he's coming to the ring. Maybe he's got something to say to Jerry Graham. And uh, this man, you know, he's, he's went back and forth with Die Hard for many years, uh, backstage politic-wise. And uh, so now Steve Baker is the forefront of making and scheduling matches on Genesis. And that's kind of got to be a slap in the face for good old Die Hard. But uh, Steve Baker here, he's a, he's a big guy. He he's stands at almost seven foot tall and gets over that top rope. But now Steve Baker looks like he's asking for a microphone. So again, I guess I'm going to be quiet and see what he's got to say. Yeah, you know, Jerry, I'm glad that you're the FFW champion. You've come a long way from when I first saw you competing. But um, that's not what I'm here about tonight. Not only... Am I the new acting general manager of FFW Genesis? But I have some news for you tonight, Jerry. You will compete in a one-on-one -on -one matchup with your mentor, with your trainer, with your former friend, with Die Hard. That's right. See, Die Hard was cleared to medically compete about a year ago. And because of that, he's going to compete tonight. So Jerry, a little later tonight, you get to play a match. You get to fight a match against your, your former boss, against Die Hard. Now also, in three weeks' time, Jerry Graham, you will defend your FFW championship against five men in an elimination chamber matchup. Now please, get out of my ring, and I want to get this night started the right way, because Die Hard... I'm here to show you how business is supposed to be ran. And I'm going to bring FFW to the number one spot. 
in all of wrestling entertainment because of the universe. And and big words from Steve Baker, uh, and apparently, uh, you know, Die Hard was medically cleared to compete uh, about a year ago, according to Steve Baker. And so tonight we get to see Die Hard in action, which is honestly going to be a little weird. Um, you know, typically we only would see Die Hard compete in one-off appearances, so it's going to be a little strange to see him competing on a weekly show. But you know, stranger things have happened, ladies and gentlemen, and. I'm ready to get this night underway. I hope you guys are ready. So a little bit later tonight, Jerry Graham and Die Hard going to go at it one-on-one. -on -one, and that's going to be interesting, no doubt about it. Uh, mentor versus trainee. So that's going to be pretty interesting. But right now, the former tag team champions, Bryson and Mark Lester, who unfortunately lost their tag team belts on episode 11 to the Chocolate Drops, who uh, were graciously given the night off tonight. And... Uh, Bryson and Mark Lester, though, keeping their heads high here. They're keeping their heads high, but they have a very huge challenge coming. And uh, I never, I never thought I would, I would get to see it happen the way that it's going to happen. But uh, Bryson and Mark Lester, especially for Bryson, Bryson is facing his former comrades here. Uh, Bryson and Mark Lester are squaring off against TCR, against the chosen ones, against Rick Wall. And James Braden. Now, collectively, James Braden is about 285 pounds. Brick Wall using somewhere between 275 and 280. Those two together are very large men. They're over 500 pounds between the two of them. And I can attest to this, but at least 85% of that is pure muscle, especially with Brick Wall, the, the one man that I've ever seen in the wrestling business that maybe has 4% body fat. The rest of it is solid muscle. And when Brickwell hits you with uh, his right punch, his right hook, it, it's literally going to send you in the next week. So hopefully for Bryce and Mark Lester, that is not the fate that they suffer tonight. And we're getting ready to get this underway. It, it's, it's almost euphoric seeing um, TCO still um, Although they, they're aging now, uh, James Braden up there in age along with Die Hard, but still able to hold himself in shape. So Bryson and, or Mark Lester and James Braden are going to start this here. And uh, as you see, James Braden now li just lifting Lester up and then tossing him halfway across the ring there. And uh, again, the, the strength of uh, James Braden is bar none. I mean, he's one of the strongest men I know. Uh, Brick Wall very well may be the strongest man I know. Uh, but you can't take Bryson or Mark Lester as the underdogs in this, in this bout. This bout is literally all heavyweights. Uh, Bryson goes at about 255, 260 pounds. Uh, Mark Lester about 250 pounds. None of these four men are small men by any stretch. And uh, so it's going to be a lot of hard-hitting action. As you saw, James Braden those close fist punches followed up by that choke and that's that is vintage TCO you go for the head the TCO were known as head hunters many many years ago and that would be why they they will pick out a limb and they will tear that limb apart if they can soften one of those limbs such as the head then when Rick Wall does hit you with that punch you're going to be seeing stars and that's that's the way it happens that's that's how TCO functions that's how they you're such a dominant faction for so many years in TPP and, and everywhere that they wrestled. When they wrestled together as a cohesive unit, as a team, they were one of the most, if not the most dominant factions I have ever seen. And in large fault, it was because of the direction of diet. But as you see, Brick Wall, they're using just pure strength, tossing a 250 pound man across the ring. Uh, you know, this, this is what I'm talking about. When you see wrestlers of this caliber and brick wall is a, a huge in-ring brick wall was one of the first people that ever joined with Die Hard to form the chosen ones alongside you know, James Brick brick wall was actually if i if my memory serves me correct brick wall was the first uh, and then you know then later jordan moore uh, and many many others throughout the years but um 
But yes, and as you see, I mean, look at brick wall just strength with this modified camel clutch here. Bryson sensing danger, uh, getting you know his partner out of a dangerous situation. And like I was saying, I mean, Bryson, a former member of TCO, Bryson trained with TCO. He was he was a member of TCO for uh, for a while there. But unfortunately, uh, TCO didn't feel that he was a good fit anymore, and so they let him go. And now Bryson has found a, a tag team partner. In Mark Lester, Mark Lester here, beautiful snap suplex to Brick Wall there. Trying to turn the tide, getting Bryson tagged into this matchup, and this may be what they needed, a former TCO member here. Bryson, a big right forearm there, and as you see, I mean, Mark Lester hanging on the ropes. He, he got work there in those few minutes he was in there. And now, look at look at the agile 200 and almost 60 pound men jumping up, a big diving elbow there. Very, very fancy for Bryson to do that in the I said this before, but hearing Bryson getting cheered uh, is so strange to me, so so weird and different. Uh, you know, because when Bryson was in TCO, even a little bit after he left TCO, he was not getting cheered. He was still, you know, the fans were not liking him, but Bryson is being cheered tonight. And I, I think that's phenomenal. That, that is great. And uh, as you see, and oh, big short arm clothesline there from, from Brick Wall, completely changing the momentum. As you see, James Braden is extending his hand there. And what is Brick Wall thinking here? Brick Wall now, as Bryson up in that single underhook. And this is, and I, this is what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. I mean, when Brick, as you saw, Brick Wall threw Bryson from the far side of the ring, and Bryson hit that corner hard enough to bounce out of the corner. But, fortunately for Bryson, he was able to turn it around, get a little bit of momentum in his favor here, but now Brick Wall counters with the side rush from Mike Smith. Tagging in James Braden here. And this is this is TCO fashion. And and that is that distraction right there. Uh, you know, Brick Wall took the, the right hand from Bryson, allowing James Braden to capitalize momentarily. And then a big knee, knee attack there, followed up by a low, a very low swinging uh, side belly to back suplex there. And you see uh, James Braden flexing his muscles here. And for Bryson, this is not good. James Braden and Rick Wall are emphatically picking, picking apart. Bryson in a, a punch uh, to the to another region. They're into the cover here, one. And as you see, Bryson starting to get back to his feet slowly. He, he's not getting to his feet immediately. Overhead belly to belly there from James Braden. And uh, that's... A, that's 280 pounds just lifting you up and then throwing you. And uh, now James Wayne and me. Then, ooh, big close in there. And Bryson just ate the canvas. You know, he hit the canvas hard there. James Braden, he thought about jumping there, but he may have changed his mind. But Bryson tags in Mark Lester. And Mark Lester, big right hand to James Braden. Followed up by a flying form to Brick Wall and, and Mark Lester realizing that this is this is a big matchup for these two. They've got to do something big. Snap suplex there to James Braden. And Mark Lester's trying to you know keep momentum going for their team, but James Braden here side rushing makes it. Ways of Mark Lester getting back to his feet. And now James Braden catches him and ooh, slams him down. Just lifted Mark Lester up and slammed him down into the cover here. One. Two, and I saw Bryson out of the corner of the screen there just jumped on top of uh, James Braden and Mark Lester to, to, to save the match. Uh, the, the damage was done off of that maneuver. And as you see, uh, Mark Lester trying to make it over to, his, over to Bryson in the corner, tags in Bryson. And now James Braden, though, able to grab the hair and then brings, him, uh, brings Bryson into that back of the oh, Wait a second. Oh, big kick right to James Braden's head. And as you see, Bryson is not back to his feet yet here, ladies and gentlemen. And a, another big right hand from Mark Lester. Now, Bryson a snap suplex. Like James Braden, that dirty, dirty eye rake, ladies and gentlemen. Very, very dirty eye rake there. And uh, like I said, for Bryson and Mark Lester, this is a test of will going against possibly one of the 
the longest running tag teams that I I, I know of. Uh, next to like Die Hard and Brick Wall or Die Hard and James Braden. But again, you see James Braden that throwing scoops now. Nothing fancy. Oh, and James Braden knocking Mark Lester off the off the wing apron now. And James Braden just kind of taking his time here. And then slamming Bryson head first onto the mat. Wait a second, what is Bryson doing? He's got James Braden up, and then, wait a second, snap suplex, trying to, trying to get a little bit of separation between these two. Bryson tags in Mark Lester. There's James Braden, oh, starting to get back to his feet, but Mark Lester's trying to keep on James Braden. That's what he's trying to do here. And again, James Braden, though, he has been on point tonight. As you see, Bryson, holy gas, he gets knocked off the apron there by James Braden. And wait a second, James Braden, has Lester up and gives him the FU there. Hooks the far leg. This may be it. Bryson's down. One, two, three. And James Braden and, and Brick Wall pick up the win over the former tag team champions who are just one week removed from losing their tag team titles. And uh, I, congratulations to TCO. But uh, it's, a, it's a tough break for Bryson and Mark Lester here as uh, James Braden and Brick Wall able to stand tall here in the ring tonight and celebrate together. As you see, I mean, this is, like I said, one of the most dominant teams in all of, in all of history. Part of one of the most dominant factions in all of wrestling. And these two are still the tag team. They're still together as a tag team. That, that is impressive, ladies and gentlemen. It was very, very impressive between James Braden and Brick Wall. They still, you know, after all these years, they still be able to come out here, even against these younger wrestlers, and do exactly what they did many, many years ago. And uh, I'm, I, I don't want to just act like the tag team match isn't important, but it is time to move on with this show. And this is, this is going to be an interesting matchup, if I don't say so myself. We've got the young, energetic, uh, charismatic uh, Shinzilla of FFW. We've got Lance Owens getting ready to square off against the former FFW Million Dollar Champion Riley Thompson. And, and for Lance Owens, and I, I've said this almost every time that Lance Owens has wrestled matches, but he always comes up so close, so, so close, but then just is so far away at the same time. Lance Owens is here for the fans. He's here to give the fans enjoyment and entertainment. And uh, I can't think of a, a better person to do it than Lance Owens. Right? He loves the fans. He loves being here in the rest. He doesn't usually win matches, though. So I'm hoping tonight that Lance Owens can change that and, and show everybody in the back and show everybody that he, he means business. He is a serious wrestler, and he has a very gifted wrestling ability and for for Riley Thompson you know, he's he's angry as uh, as his wife Rochelle was indefinitely suspended uh, immediately following Endgame so for Riley Thompson he's, he's got to come to the ring side he's got to come to the ring alone every night until that suspension is lifted and from what I understand it won't be lifted anytime soon so for Riley Thompson you know he, he's got that anger from that and uh, so we're getting ready to get this matchup underway. Lance Owens and Riley Thompson. I'm sure it's going to be a great match. I'm really rooting for Lance Owens tonight, ladies and gentlemen. I know I'm not supposed to root for any sp specific wrestlers, but I'm really, really rooting for Lance Owens tonight. I really want to see Lance Owens pick up that win. But uh, here we go. Lance Owens, Riley Thompson, one-on-one -on -one contest tonight on Genesis. This is going to be a good stepping stone for, for, Lan for Lance Owens tonight. And uh, as you see, but Riley Thompson starts off with the momentum and that forearm right to the lower back. And wait a second, Lance Owens though turns it around. And now Riley Thompson able to turn it around with that, uh, that rear chin lock there with that clubbing blow. But again, look at, look at Lance Owens. Lance Owens, a very unique, gifted wrestler. 
and that's the thing you can't take away from any of these wrestlers. Is, I mean, this is this is wrestling 101 right here, ladies and gentlemen, be, between these two. This is wrestling 101, and as you see, I mean, that that ended in a stalemate. And now, uh, Riley Thompson, that uh, bridging suplex there. They're not even a one, not even a full one count there. Uh, Owens is able to get his shoulders up, and again, Riley Thompson does this. And um, a, a one count that time for uh, for Riley Thompson on Lance Owens. And oh, big right hand! The referee kind of got caught in the in the crossfire, but Lance Owens still able to uh, successfully wrestle here. Big uppercut there from Lance Owens going for the cover. And a two count uh, off that uppercut. That uppercut may have sent. Riley Thompson a little loopy there. And uh, as you see, Lance Owens though, showing his ability um, to you know stay focused in a situation or in the cover here. But the, the leg of Riley Thompson was on the ropes. Going out the ropes here is, is Owens and a big backdrop there from Riley Thompson. And Riley Thompson stomping right on the forehead. That's not gonna do you any favors. Uh, you know, it can make you bleed if that boot catches you the wrong way. And now Riley Thompson, big clothesline out of the corner. Again, going for the cover here. One, two, and a two count as Lance Owens barely, barely got his shoulder off the mat there. Missed with the wild clothesline from, from Thompson. As Owens again, another big uppercut going for the cover here. One, two, and another two count. Another two count for Lance Owens. As Riley Thompson, though, showing he, he's got the wherewithal. And again, that overhead bridging suplex. Again, with the bridge. And again, Lance Owens able to kick out. And for those of you that did not see, <clears throat> grabbing the hair there of Lance Owens, those of you that didn't see the performance from Riley Thompson at Endgame against Anthony Dune, you definitely got to go watch that. That was a spectacular match to watch between those two for the Million Dollar Championship at FFW Endgame. But uh, as you see, right now though, I mean, Lance Owens is giving Riley Thompson a good run for his money. Uh, Riley Thompson did miss there, but a big forearm. Sending Riley Thompson into the corner. Oh, a big right hand there. Riley Thompson turns it around. Ooh, big back chop. Another big back chop. Followed up by a third huge, huge back chop right there in the corner. Into the cover here. One, two, and a two count again for Riley Thompson. The frustration has got to be building here. And that clubbing blow. And ooh, a big neck breaker there from uh, the, the very young charismatic Riley Thompson. Going for the cover here, but the rope break able to save Lance Owens. As you see, Lance Owens starting to get to his feet a little bit slower here. And he ducks under that big right hand and oh, it closed on him. And, and that was very, very impressive for Lance Owens to do that, ladies and gentlemen. I, I didn't expect to see Lance Owens do that, but he, he pulled it out. And another big close. On him. When it comes to weight distribution between these two, they're about the same size. It's, it's pretty evenly met. They look different masses, but Riley Thompson is uh, much leaner and, much, and taller. And uh, Lance Owens is more stocky. He's more of a stocky build, but their their weight is almost identical. They both weigh in, weighed in tonight at about 235 pounds. So they're very close in proximity weight-wise. And uh, so that, that's, you know, it's very a very evenly contested match. A, a big forearm there from Lance Owens. Where's like Riley Thompson, a kick right to the ribs. Runs in, big clothesline there. Into the cover here, one, two, and a two count again as Lance Owens again was able to get his shoulders off the mat. And now again, that bridging um, overhead belly to belly type maneuver without the, without the pin though. Normally we see Riley Thompson do the pin, but not that time. And uh, what is Lance Owens here? He's gonna go high risk and this may not pay off as uh, Riley Thompson now getting to his feet. He jumps in, double axe handle, and it paid off there. Into the cover here. One, two, and another two count. As Riley Thompson forcefully got his shoulders off the mat. And now Lance Owens again going to the top rope, but oh, big running drop kick there from Riley Thompson. 
Now Riley Thompson setting something up here on the top rope, and that jump breaker from the top rope, that'll, that'll knock some teeth out, ladies and gentlemen, no doubt about it. Now what is Riley Thompson think? Riley Thompson, a half Nelson, oh, and that was like a half Nelson release suplex. They're going for the cover here. One, two, then almost a three count, but again, Lance Owens able to kick out. Lance Owens climbing towards the ropes and trying to pull himself back up to his feet. But wait a second, Riley Thompson, he, he's looking for it. He calls this move the nosebleed. And that's got to be it, hooking the far leg. One, two, three, and that is all she wrote. Riley Thompson picks up the win tonight against Lance Owens, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, tough break, tough, tough break for Lance Owens. Very, very tough break. Uh, congratulations goes out to Riley Thompson, of course. But uh, I think if, if Lance Owens would have got his his finishing maneuver in, I, I think that I think it could have went either way. It was a matter of who got it first. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we do have to take our first commercial break of the night. So sit tight, and we'll be right back in just a few minutes. Hi, I'm Die Hard, the CEO of The Power Plant. Now, I get many occurrences throughout the week when people ask me, what does it take to be a TPP superstar? Well, most importantly, you have to be a constant professional. You always have to think and put the fans first. And I also always get questions of, is it storyline driven? Are there meaningful things? Remember, TPP Frontline, it is a family-oriented program. We care about our superstars. Every wrestler that wrestles in TPP knows that there are dangers involved with wrestling. As any gifted athlete in the world would say, it always comes down to this. These are trained professional right off, athletes. Three on one here. The numbers game. So what makes you think that TPP Frontline is different? It's just the way we are. We are a different kind of place to be. Again, I'm Die Hard, the CEO of the power plant. And we're back here, folks. And, uh, you know, before the commercial break, we saw the tag match. We saw uh, Lance Owens versus Riley Thompson. And uh, that was the Lance Owens and Riley Thompson match was a great matchup. But ladies and gentlemen, it is time to switch gears to our adrenaline weight class. This is the high octane weight class, uh, very high paced. Uh, I'm interested to see what's going to happen here with Travis Porter taking on the current reigning adrenaline champion in Takamuri, uh, straight out of uh, Nagoya, Japan. And Travis Porter coming from the mean streets of Brooklyn, New York. And uh, so this is, again, you know, uh, an inter not only interracial, but uh, this is almost like a global conflict uh, with the Japanese when it comes to uh, the American wrestlers. Um, and Takamuri comes from a very uh, articulate wrestling family in Nagoya, Japan. And so for Takamuri, he's looking to show exactly why he is the adrenaline champion. And uh, so we're getting ready to get this matchup underway. Takamuri versus Travis Porter. Non-title matchup. But everything will have some type of uh, ramifications. We, we gotta believe that if uh, maybe if uh, Travis Porter were to win tonight, Maybe that'd put him in some type of standing to compete for that adrenaline championship, uh, you know, at uh, the elimination chamber in, in you know a few weeks. So I'm interested to see what's going to happen. I know you guys are interested. I'm ready to see this get underway. And uh, so we're just a few moments here before Travis Porter squares off 
against the current uh, the current adrenaline champion in Takumi. And I, like I said, I'm, I'm interested to see this matchup get underway. I hope you guys are interested or ready to see this. I think this is going to be that sleeper match, the barn burner of the show here. The adrenaline weight class, Travis Porter, Takumi. And Travis Porter, one of the most uh, under underestimated adrenaline wrestlers here. Standing tie up between these two and Travis Porter into the side headlock. But Takamuri sending Porter into the ropes. Quick uh, jump over there. And a quick hurricane. Right in the early get go get the early get go of the matchup here. And now Takamuri trying to dictate the pace uh, and set the tone for this matchup. And, and you know Takamuri wants to quickly make dominance over Travis Porter, but Travis Porter is not going to go down without a fight. That's just the way it is. I, he, his entire life he has fought. And so for Travis Porter, he, he wants to fight. That's, that's what Travis Porter is going to do. He's wrenching on that side headlock and then the takedown. Big close fist punch there from Travis Porter. And now Travis Porter again, another big right hand. Going off the ropes and Takamiri missed. Uh, but wait a second, Takamiri got back to his feet. Quick snap suplex there as uh, Travis Porter was unable to uh, to keep momentum in his favor. And now Takamuri again. Dominance early in the match dictating the pace here. Takamuri that basic leg trick. Nothing fancy at all about that ladies and gentlemen. Just in your face kind of style. But Travis Porter here, like I said, he, his entire life he's been a fighter and a big bag chopper right across the chest. And that'll... Leave it bright red in the morning. Travis Porter, what's he gonna do here? Travis Porter jumps over, big cross by the springboard. And again, this is this is what the adrenaline division is all about. It's all about the high flying, quick hitting action. One for the cover there, only a one count, a long one count for Travis Porter. And now Travis Porter again with the springboard. Talking Murray here, starting to. Uh, Maybe he's starting to realize that Travis Porter is not a pushover. Another quick hurricane runner there from Takamuri. And again, setting up uh, pacing in his favor here. Takamuri again stomping on the face. Nothing fancy at all about that. Followed up by the elbow right across the chin. Takamuri snap in there, followed up by a jumping fist drop. Like I was saying, I mean, Takamuri trying to insert his dominance in the early going here, but Travis Porter was putting up a fight, and Travis Porter's got to get that second win. He's got to get something going, because right now Takamuri's just having his way with Travis Porter, and that's not a good thing for him. And he missed with that, Takamuri missed with that uh, Inzaguri there. Big back chops there from Travis Porter. Four big welting back chops followed up by a beautiful standing drop kick. And now Travis Porter going to the top rope here. Jumps off, big flying elbow right to the shoulder blade. That was right on Takamura's shoulder blade. That could have broke the, the, the shoulder or the shoulder blade, the elbow of, of either of these young men. And uh, Travis Porter here. Oh, big slaps right to the face there. Going off the ropes, runs in. Drop kick right to the ribs. Now Travis Porter going for the cover here. One and a one count. As Takamuri forcefully got his shoulders off the mat. Runs in. Oh, big uh, jumping leg kick there. As you see Travis Porter trying to get this FFW universe on his side. Now Travis Porter here. Oh, and that neck or that backbreaker there. That invert or that backbreaker from that uh, kneeling position. And Takamuri counters from the ground. Big right hand right to the ribs. Big flying elbow. And now Takamuri again the elbow right across the chin. Wait a second, Travis Porter turns around. Big uppercut there. Travis Porter thinking here. Travis Porter, a knee right to the ribs. That slingshot leg drop there. Going for the cover. This could be it. One, two, 
And a two count as Takamuri somehow, some way, was able to kick out, going off the ropes here. But a quick hurt, Kamara this time with the cover, with the leg hook. Two, and a two count as somehow, some way, Travis Porter quickly forced himself out there. And Takamuri picks a beautiful standing drop kick. Now Takamuri sending Travis Porter to the corner. Like Travis Porter runs out and oh, beautiful standing drop kick in. Takamuri took too long pandering to the fans there. And it allowed Travis Porter to get back on the offense, going running in. Big double knee attack there. Amazing. What is Travis Porter doing? Travis Porter heading up to the top rope here. He's, he's stalking Takamuri. He is stalking him, ladies and gentlemen. Jumps off. Oh, and a drop kick right to the ribs of Travis Porter there from Takamuri into the cover here. One, two, and a two count as Travis Porter is still able to kick out. And Travis Porter now going for the cover, and uh, Takamuri able to rise to get his foot on the ropes. And with a quick roll up here, one, and not even a one count as again the rope break is what saved Takamuri there. And Takamuri sends Travis Porter into the corner here. Amazing. What is Takamuri thinking? Big right hand there. Another big right hand. And Takamuri is going to try to jack the jaw of Travis Porter. And Takamuri sending Travis Porter again to the far corner. Takamuri runs in, misses with the drop kick there. Travis Porter, beautiful standing drop kick. And now Takamuri getting back to shoot. Travis Porter, wild elbow there. And, and Takamuri, wait, wait a second, quick roll up here from Travis Porter. One, two, three, and Travis Porter picks up the win. A, a quick roll up out of nowhere for Travis Porter. He just pinned the current adrenaline champion. Congratulations goes out to Travis Porter tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Literally out of nowhere with that quick roll up uh, to pin the current adrenaline champion. Takamiri was taken for a ride there. He did not, he, I don't think he realized, I don't, I think Takamiri now realizes what happened. And uh, he's now getting back into the ring. And oh Jesus, that big flying clothesline from Takamiri. Travis Porter starting to get back to his feet here. And wait a second, Takamura has Travis Porter up on his shoulders here. And this is after the match, by the way, and drops him in between his legs there. And that was just, that was unnecessary on Takamura's part. That's Takamura being a sore loser, ladies and gentlemen. And uh, as you see Takamura here, pointing to, uh, to the fans in attendance saying, that, uh, yeah, he did that. And, uh, yeah, we saw that you did that, Takamuri, after you lost to Travis Porter tonight. And, uh, unfortunately, uh, Travis Porter's victory was short-lived success as Takamuri extracted his revenge by attacking him immediately, you know, following his, his matchup, his big victory there. And, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we, we do got to switch gears here to our co-main event of the evening. Uh, the former number one contender for the FFW Championship, Adam D. Whitmore, is taking on the returning, the returning Jordan Morgan. This is going to be, this is the first time I think these two have ever wrestled in a match against each other. This is an interesting aspect. And, you know, we've already kind of seen that TCO is somewhat back together. We saw James Graydon and Brick Wall working together. I don't know the, what the full capacity is. Last time I talked to Jordan Moore, uh, he was done with that chapter in his life. And uh, I mean, there's no, there's nothing wrong with being done with that part of your, your career. But uh, Jordan Moore loves to wrestle. He's got amazing wrestling ability. So this should be a very unique match between these two. Uh, I've said this numerous times, but Adam D. Whitmore knew that he wanted to be a wrestler when he was five years old, ladies and gentlemen. He knew that he wanted to be a professional wrestler. 
and he's given that opportunity here in FFW. And he comes out and he gets his best performance that he possibly can every night. So this should be, like I said, this should be an interesting matchup between these two. Both very gifted wrestlers, very, very gifted wrestlers, if I don't say so myself. And uh, so Jordan Moore, Adam D. Whitmore, this is going to be one of those matches. This is Ohio versus Connecticut right here. And, uh, you know, Jordan Moore, one of, as I, you know, as I said earlier during the, the tag team match, Jordan Moore, one of the first members of TCO. And one of their running jokes was, and you know, even Dyer to this day still says that it was true, but all the first members of TCO all have the exact same tattoo on their body. And it's the, the soaring eagle on the back. And Jordan Moore wore that tattoo with pride on his back. Uh, a huge soaring eagle uh, stating the chosen ones, freedom. And, uh, you know, he supported that for many, many years. And unfortunately with tattoos, he decided to keep it. He liked the way it went. And uh, for Jordan Moore, this is, this is a great, big opportunity for him. This is almost like a clean slate. Uh, you know, I, as far as I know, Die Hard isn't exactly making glances at Jordan Moore anymore because the last time Die Hard was across the ring from Jordan Moore, Jordan Moore pinned him again for the three count and, and defeated Die Hard. Well, the past two times that Die Hard has faced Jordan Moore, he's lost. So I don't think I don't think Die Hard or anybody from TCO really wants to get back into that um, that pattern with Jordan Moore. But uh, we're getting ready to get this underway. Jordan Moore uh, versus ADW. One on one. This is going to be one of those unique, interesting matches. Like I said, these are both very gifted athletes. Standing tie up here. I'm interested to see who's going to get the better of the situation. Jordan Moore starts things off here, bringing Whitmore to the to the mat there. And, and you know, it's 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 funny that uh, that that this that it's happening this way. Uh, you know, because Adam D. Whitmore would technically be. Uh, the more technical of these two. I mean, Adam D. Whitmore was trained in a very classic type wrestling environment, but Jordan Moore showing great, uh, great expertise here. And uh, as you see, I mean, Jordan Moore is not, he's not backing down to Adam D. Whitmore, and that, that's good. That's very good. Be oh, wait a second, over side. Uh, Jordan Moore went for a big wild hook, and Whitmore caught him there. Going for a quick cover and a one count as uh, Jordan Moore able to get his shoulders off the mat. Going, Whitmore going off the ropes, but Jordan Moore catches. Whitmore, big spine buster there. And that spine buster, it will definitely leave you in pain the next morning. And uh, while I've got a few moments here, just to kind of tell everybody about, uh, you know, Jordan Moore's history, when, uh, when Jordan Moore first joined TCO, uh, Jordan Moore was 16, and uh, in all states in the United States you have to be 18 to, and this kind of goes this is a story of how he got the tattoo on his back but uh, you know you have to be 18 in the United States to get a tattoo or else you have to have parental consent and uh, Jordan Moore's parents weren't there when Jordan Moore got that tattoo Die Hard said that he was Jordan Moore's dad and gave him parental consent to get that tattoo and you know back back many years ago uh, it wasn't such a big deal about seeing ID as it is nowadays but uh just a little funny story. I just wanted to share that with you all. Uh, and, you know, that's kind of where the old man type banter comes uh, when everybody refers to Die Hard being the old man. Uh, you know, because he's clearly the oldest man on one of the old... Actually, he is the oldest man uh, in any roster I've ever uh, had the pleasure of calling matches for. But he's a very gifted old man. And uh, Whitmore now sending more to the corner. And then a quick release German suplex there. And this has been a very smash mouth type technical match. I mean, this is very hard hitting between these two. I didn't expect it to be um, a super aggressive match. I, I expected a lot of technical moves by uh, Adam D. Whitmore, but that's not the case tonight. He's being very aggressive with Jordan Moore, but Jordan Moore is being just as aggressive with him. And Jordan Moore is known to be aggressive. He, he's known to respond in an aggressive manner. Jordan Moore will, will respond to a situation the way that the situation is happening to him. So if you're being extremely aggressive with Jordan Moore, he will be extremely aggressive with you. Big clothesline out of the corner there. Now Jordan Moore, big jumping elbow drop. 
Whitmore getting back to his feet at that, that elbow drop may have knocked the wind right out of his chest there. And Whitmore getting back to his feet, but Jordan Moore, big forearm there. Misses with that leg sweep, and again that uh, overhead uh, side belly to belly there into the cover here, but the rope break, saving Jordan Moore. And oh, big clubbing blow there. Wait a second, big right hand there from Adam D. Whitmore and a big clothesline. Another, oh wait a second, Jordan Moore able to sidestep with their big leg sweep. Standing drop kick there from Jordan Moore. And like I said, I mean, Jordan Moore responds uh, to a situation the way that it's happening to him. And uh, so if Adam D. Whitmore wants to be aggressive with Jordan Moore, Jordan Moore will be aggressive with Adam D. Whitmore. Uh, but I gotta hand it to Whitmore, and I, I've gotta hand it to Jordan Moore tonight. These these two are coming out here and, and giving the best they can, and a big flapjack there from Jordan Moore. And Jordan, big elbow right to the right to the small of the back, and that's not gonna do anybody any favors. Jordan now going to the top rope, gonna jump out. Oh, and a big uh, kind of like a tossing T-bone there into the cover here. One. Two, and a, almost a three count for Adam, for ADW there on Jordan. And there's a Whitmore here, grabs a hair and slams the head of, of Moore into the mat. And that, that's not gonna feel good for anybody. And where's, oh, that big uppercut from Adam D. Whitmore. Now, Whitmore here, that stop right to the head. Going for the cover, hooks the far leg, one, two, Almost a three count, but somehow Jordan was able to get his shoulder off the mat. Whitmore going off the ropes. Oh, and a kick right to the back of the head. And this is what I'm talking about. Whitmore showing his aggressive side, but Jordan responding in an aggressive manner. Jordan now runs in big flying forearm there. Jumps right back up to his feet. Very, very impressive of, uh, of Jordan to do that. And now Jordan sending Whitmore onto the apron here. Bringing him back in the hard way, using the momentum from Adam D. Whitmore, hanging on the ropes there to bring him back in the hard way there. Big jumping elbow drops, jumps back up to his feet. Now what is Jordan thinking? Another big seated elbow drop. And then this is, again, like I was saying, uh, the guys in Everybody that was in TCO, they were known as headhunters. They would pick your limbs apart, and Jordan Moore knows if he goes after the body enough. If you can't, you know, walk around because you're, you can't breathe, it's going to help you out in the long run. And, and Whitmore here going for the throat of Jordan Moore. And now Jordan counters from the ground again. Big right hand right to the ribs. Runs in. Swing German suplex there. And again, I mean, Jordan Moore has focused 95% of his attacks on the on the body. The body and the head. Jordan Moore is one of those gifted wrestlers that knows how to handle everything he's got to do. And Jordan Moore, again, that elbow drop. Again, just planting the elbow firmly into the chest cavity. And a big clothesline there. Wait a second. Jordan Moore maybe trying to go to the top rope. Jordan Moore may be running out of gas a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. Jordan from the and Whitmore starting to get a little bit of momentum, starting to move around a little bit. Whitmore here back to his feet. Jordan jumps off. Big missile drop kick. And Jordan here, he's trying to figure out what he what he what, what can he do next to try to take out to take out Whitmore. Because Whitmore doesn't want to lose to Jordan tonight. You, you know that he doesn't want to lose to him. He wants to, and I see Jordan went down to one knee into the cover here. One, two, and almost a three count, but again, Whitmore able to get his shoulders off the mat. And uh, like I was saying, Whitmore does not want to lose to Jordan Knight, and Jordan doesn't want to lose to Whitmore. They both want to win this matchup. This could be a decisive matchup to help decide their future in FFW. And uh, another big flapjack there from Jordan. And it's got to it's be taking a toll here on Whitmore. Whitmore is slowly, every, every time something happens, he's getting back to his feet even more slowly than he was before. And now Jordan here. Jordan, we've seen this before, that slow 
throwing T-bone suplex. And as you see Jordan Moore, though, trying to catch his breath here a little bit, getting ready for it. Jordan Moore, I think Jordan Moore is getting into, uh, getting into his comfort zone. He's getting all that ring rust that he may have had worked off. And, oh, a big uppercut there from Jordan. Oh, and a big running super kick, and Whitmore may be out here. There is, and Jordan's calling Whitmore back to his feet. And Jordan, this is like, a, this is the inverted roll of dice. Shades of what Die Hard's finisher was. And Jordan, no gas in the tank, just puts his arm over, over Adam D. Whitmore. One, two, three, and that is all she wrote. The inverted roll the dice, Jordan Moore picks up the win tonight over Adam D. Whitmore. Interesting, interestingly enough, it was a clean match. There was no disqualifications happening. There was no interference. I'm very impressed. It went down the way it should have, one on one. Congratulations goes out to Jordan Moore. Uh, unfortunately for Adam D. Whitmore, he did not pick up the win tonight. Now, he didn't pick up the win against Jerry Graham either, but that does not mean that, that that was a great match between those two ladies and gentlemen. We have to take our final commercial break of the night. Up next, we have Die Hard facing Jerry Graham. And ladies and gentlemen, I can't wait to see that. So just stay tuned. We'll be back in just a few moments. Sit tight, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back. Hi, I'm Die Hard, the CEO of The Power Plant. What is evolution? Evolution is the process of change, development, and growth. TPP Frontline is change, development, and growth. And whether you want to believe that or not, it does not matter. Because ultimately, TPP Frontline is a lifestyle choice. And we're back, folks, and up next, actually in just a few moments here, it's the main event of the evening. We have the CEO of FFW and Die Hard facing the current defending and reigning FFW champion, Jerry Graham. And ladies and gentlemen, this is a, this is a big deal. Uh, you know, Steve Baker, our acting general manager, scheduled this matchup. He made this match official uh, at the beginning of the show tonight. Uh, citing that Die Hard has been medically cleared to wrestle for the past year. And, uh, you know, for Die Hard, I'm not, I don't want to say that Die Hard's past his prime, but Die Hard is definitely past his prime. I mean, it's just, just the way it is. Die Hard, Die Hard wrestled professionally for 18 years. Numerous uh, body injuries, broken legs, broken backs, broken hands, broken necks, broken arms, uh, broken noses, broken jaws. Dyer's broken many of his limbs in his career, and it's all starting to uh, kind of catch up to him. As you can see, Dyer's not, um, I don't want to say he's not physically fit because Dyer's still in great shape, but as you see, he's not as, uh, as refined as uh, what other wrestlers on the roster are, and that is possibly because, you know, Dyer doesn't have to hit the gym every single day. He doesn't have to step in between the ropes every single day. And as much as, as much as I'm not a gambling man, and as much as I don't like to place odds against me, uh, any other in any other situation, I would literally place my bet on Die Hard winning. However, that's when we know that we're getting, we're expecting to see Die Hard compete in the ring, and that we usually have about a month's advance notice on that, so we know that he eventually is going to be in the ring. We didn't know tonight that he was going to be in the ring, and as you see, apparently he didn't know either, as uh, he just came to the ring in slacks and elbow pads. And, uh, you know, his opponent, Jerry Graham, has been a very successful uh, defending champion. He has overcome many, many obstacles, and tonight is going to be one of those obstacles for Jerry Graham. And he's got to be able to take out the guy that introduced him to the business, you know, and. and and brought him up to a mainstream show. So for Jerry Graham, this is 
almost as if a, a passing of the torch finally for Jerry Graham. You know, because when Jerry Graham came in, Die Hard was still the uh, the champion back in uh, TPP, and they just saw a little smirk there from Jerry Graham. And uh, you know, for Jerry Graham, you got to give the you got to believe the advantage is for Jerry Graham. Jerry Graham wrestles six days a week. He's in the gym seven days a week. This is Jerry Graham's home. And, uh, you know, for Die Hard, I'm not saying that Die Hard can't still wrestle, but Die Hard has age working against him. And he, he's got a slow metabolism working against him. He's got all these things working against him tonight. And uh, I almost feel as though this matchup was made by Steve Baker just to get under Die Hard's skin or, you know, maybe to see Die Hard get hurt and not ever be able to wrestle again. It could be numerous, numerous things. And uh, we're about to get this matchup underway. I'm, I'm very excited to see this, to see what, what is going to happen between these two. I, I have my reservations, uh, assuming that Jerry Graham is going to outclass and outperform Die Hard in every manner possible for the simple fact that Jerry Graham is, you know, 10 years younger. And uh, so here we go, Die Hard Jerry Graham. And as you see, Jerry Graham sending a message to Die Hard in the early going there telling him he's going to hit the mat and hit the and Jerry Graham's going to hit that saving grace. Standing tie up here. And uh, Jerry Graham brings it to a rear waist lock, which is which would be too, which is expected, but Dyer turns it around. And uh, ooh, a big forearm there, right to the uh, right to the middle of the mat. That wasn't anything too fancy. Dyer slamming Jerry Graham, slamming him right down onto the mat, and then elbowing him across the ear there, the, the ear and the side of the head, and again. But Jerry Graham here, able to wrestle himself back up, and then a forearm right to the small of the back there from Jerry Graham. And this is, and now this is almost as if, I, I know I said this a little bit earlier, but this is like wrestling 101 here between these two. And uh, Jerry Graham, their big right hand uh, to die hard. And another standing tie up. And Jerry Graham again gets the better of the situation. Oh, and a, another big right hand. And oh, a big right hand there from Jerry Graham, but Dyer swats that one away. And a series of back chops there, and, and Jerry Graham catches that right hand. And oh, another big right hand there. And Die Hard with that final right hand, sending Jerry Graham to the mat, going for the cover, not even a one count there as Jerry Graham got his shoulder off the mat. But as you see, I mean, Die Hard very slow with his punches, grabbing the hair and slamming Jerry Graham uh, the back of his head first, right, on, right into the mat there. And again, going for the cover here, and, and, uh, another one count for, uh, for Die Hard. And, uh, you know, like I was saying, for Die Hard, this is... This is da this is a da this is dangerous territory, as uh, Die Hard is not, you know, it's been a while since uh, Die Hard's actively competed in the ring. The last time we saw him in a match was against Jordan Moore, and that was at TPP Reckoning back in uh, May of uh, 2014. So that was that was a while ago. And as you see, Die Hard on the outside taking a little bit of a reprieve here. And Jerry Graham went to the outside but got back in the ring as the referee is exercising his 10 count here. And now Die Hard slides back into the ring, getting ready to get things underway. And uh, Jerry Graham has got the arm hooked in a snap suplex there. And again, Die Hard rolled out of the ring taking his time here. Dyard's trying to pick his spots. He's trying to decide what he wants to do. And Dyard now yelling at the referee to count faster. Ooh, and a, a big overhand right from Dyard there to Jerry Graham. Oh, and Dyard takes a, a long spill to the outside there. That's not going to do him any favors. And now Dyer getting on the apron. And ooh, a, a big forearm from Dyer. And, and the thing with Dyer is uh, he may strike slower now. And he may, uh, he may not be nearly as fast as he was or maybe not even as strong as he used to be. But ooh, and Dyer grabbing that hair again. But when Dyer hits you, you know it, it's, it's got to hurt because he, he's, he, puts, he puts everything into it. He pulls no punches, uh, you know, because Dyer trained. Uh, you know, back in yesteryear of when uh, when wrestling was, I mean, it was still 
uh, sports entertainment, but not to the same extent that it is nowadays. Jerry Graham in the cover here. A two count on Die Hard. And as you see, Die Hard already starting to get up to his feet slower. And that, you know, you got to believe that's because due to uh, fatiguing issues due to Die Hard's age. And uh, as you see, Die Hard, this is vintage Die Hard. We, we have a, an interesting crowd tonight as some of the crowd is actually cheering for Die Hard, which is, actually, it's very weird. I'm not going to lie. It's, it's strange to hear the fans cheering as Die Hard is hitting. Oh, and a big right hand there from Jerry Graham in the corner. Followed up by a flying clothesline. As I was saying, it's very strange to hear the fans actually cheering for Dyer, trying to motivate Die Hard. It's very strange. Typically, Dyer would just, you know, be getting booed. And Jerry Graham trying to get Dyer to get back to a sweet Dyer, trying to catch his breath here. Runs in, but Dyer catches Jerry Graham with a big spine buster there. That's a patented Dyer maneuver into the cover two, and a two count for Die Hard. And uh, the Die Hard spine buster, that'll, that'll definitely do some damage, grabbing the hair again and slamming Jerry Graham right onto the mat. And Wade's like, what is Dyer doing? Dyer's gonna go to the top rope, and this is high risk, for, especially for Die Hard. Dyer flies off, big double axe handle there. And now Dyer, those closed fist punches, just pounding away on the side of the skull. And what is Dyer, you know, at this point, at this juncture, you got to wonder, what is Die Hard going to do? And a big hanging suplex there. And as you see, Die Hard slowly, slowly getting to his feet. Went to one knee there. And Jerry Graham using a, a TCO trick there. Pulling down the uh, pulling the rope right across the throat there. Allowing himself to get... It was a, a mistake on Die Hard's part. And Jerry Graham side belly to back there. And now Jerry Graham... Sending Die Hard into the ropes. He catches Die Hard with that float over neck breaker there, that, that twisting, spinning neck breaker into the cover here. One, two, and another two count. As, uh, as Die Hard forcefully got his shoulders off the mat. Runs in, big running clothesline to Die Hard. And, and for Die Hard, you gotta wonder, when does Die Hard say, enough is enough, it's time for me to just let Jerry Graham win this matchup. And Jerry Graham, big clothesline there. Uh, you know, and unfortunately with Die Hard, Die Hard's uh, a very pig-headed individual. Die Hard will do everything in his power to constantly fight. Big uh, flying for him from the second rope there for, for Jerry Graham. Into the cover here. One, two, and another two count as Die Hard again forcefully gets his shoulders off the mat. Die Hard runs in. Oh, and a, a running haymaker uh, right in the face of Jerry Graham. As you see Die Hard now starting to stomp away. And, I got to give it to Die Hard, though. He's, he's, he's competing relatively well tonight, even though he's, uh, he's aged. I mean, Die Hard is clearly aged. I don't think anybody will deny that. Die Hard again going to the top rope, and he's going to try to fly here. Die Hard jumps off. Big flying elbow drop, and that's a once in a 10-year lifespan where he actually hits that into the cover here. One, two, and almost a three count, but somehow, some way. Uh, the FFW champion still has enough in the tank to kick out it. And that was, you know, Dyer's a 260-pound man. That's 260 pounds just coming crashing down on you. But a big uh, grounded jawbreaker there from Jerry Graham. A back chop, but Dyer turns it around. And, ooh, a big forearm. Followed up by a big right hand. And then, and he went for another one, but Jerry Graham turned it around. And, like I said, I mean, Dyer's... Oh, and Dyer again spills to the outside. Like I was saying, Dyer's doing phenomenally well. He's... Although he's poorly conditioned, he's competing very well against Jerry Graham. And now Jerry Graham, a second and a third right hand right there up against the barricade. And all the fans in the front row there, they got to literally get their hands right on Die Hard. And you know, that doesn't happen very often. And ooh, a big elbow from Jerry Graham. Now what's Jerry going to do here? Jerry picking up Die Hard. Sending Die Hard into the corner. And at this point, Die Hard's gas tank has got to be completely empty here as uh, Jerry Graham now oh big right hand and Dyer counters Dyer's going to try to fly again big flying oh no big power slam from Jerry Graham into the cover here one two and, and why is why is Die Hard's theme song playing over the PA system and that's James Braden and Brick Wall as uh, Jerry Graham 
Uh, side rusher likes me in the ring here to, to uh, die hard. And James Braden and Brick Wall just standing there. And uh, they definitely have Jerry Graham's attention as Graham now approaching the side of the ring there. I, Jerry Graham's got to keep eyes everywhere as the Die Hard is now rolled to the outside of the ring uh, right here in front of the right in front of the broadcast table and uh, it, he's got a weapon he's getting a he's got a weapon in his he's got a sledgehammer in his hands and oh Jesus started with the sledgehammer from behind that referee's calling for the bell that's a disqualification and and now Brickwall getting in the ring and do not tell me that this is how this is going to end tonight with Jerry Graham being decimated by TCO at Dyer, that rake of the eyes, and now James Braden and Die Hard stomping away on Jerry Graham. In typical TCO fashion, Jerry, or James Braden here with, uh, hold, holding Jerry Graham in the front face lock, and, and now Brick Wall grabbing the hair and slamming Jerry Graham to the mat. And Jerry Graham has been slammed to the mat quite a bit in this matchup, and now uh, Brick Wall and James Braden just having their trouble and, or having their, their time here. And this move is called the double trouble and that was the tag team finishing maneuver of Die Hard and Brick Wall. And as you see Brick Wall, James Braden, Die Hard all standing over Jerry Graham. And as you see Jerry Graham, although Jerry Graham's still trying to get back to his feet, he's still trying to get to his feet here. And that, oh that clubbing overhand from Die Hard there. And now Die Hard has Jerry Graham up on his shoulders and the Diehard drop and Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. And Jerry Graham is completely out here as uh, TCO is, well, unfortunately, TCO is standing tall tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Jerry Graham has not moved yet as uh, Diehard James Braden and Brick Wall standing over Jerry Graham in the ring here. Ladies and gentlemen, we are out of time for tonight. Make sure to tune in next time. I, I got to know. I've got to know what the result is going to be. Have a good night, everybody.